So, how does the Easter Bunny do it? When I was a little kid, I would lay awake at night and imagine how does he deliver eggs and Easter baskets for the entire world in just one night? Sounds a bit like Santa, don't you think? Okay, at first, I thought he must have a super fast car. I created this extraordinary little nugget last year. More on that later. But I realized he can't cross the ocean in a car. So then it must be a hot air balloon. Sorry, hot egg balloon. He rides high in the air under cover of night, dropping eggs and Easter baskets along the way. He must have really good aim. Okay, so now let's make my version of a hot egg balloon. A bit colorful and definitely ornate. Okay, let's get started. I found this Easter basket at Walmart. It was actually a frozen Easter basket that had a handle on it I've already taken off. I'm going to cover this in my coordinating color and I'm going to use this minky fleece fabric, I think it was called. And then I'm going to layer it with this much more expensive trim fabric that I got at Joann's. It has sequin swirls and these pretty little flowers attached to it. A nice 3D texture. So you can see now that I'm going to do the petal, the petal, and leave the in-between this way, and then my trim will run along all of those seams, covering up any mishaps or ugliness. Three more to do. I remembered something one of my favorite followers said, because I kept burning my fingers, and she suggested getting the silicone finger protectors. And I was like, oh, I've always wondered what those were for. You can see where I've got glue, hot glue all over my hands and my fingers. So the best thing about this is that I can pat directly over the tool. It's not sticking to the silicone and it's allowing it to still dry clear because not only am I not burning my fingers, I'm able to use this in a way I never have before but if needed on multiple occasions. I think that's a big part of being able to learn and grow as a crafter or as a maker, obviously, is by other artisans passing on their tips and tricks. I've got the whole thing covered. You can see there are some spots with some great imperfections where I trimmed away too much, but I'm going to be covering this in the seams with this white trim. So I will start here and actually run it all the way along the top edge and back down. And I think that's gonna finish the petals off really nicely. It'll make them more defined and it'll match with the hot egg or the balloon. All right. I'm gonna leave these for now because I will need to put something decorative at the bottom because this is intended to hang from the ceiling. What we'll mostly be looking at is that. So, there it is. Of course, 
there will probably be additional decorations, but really happy with the way this has turned out. The new E2000. Teal glitter exterior, taffeta seats, flower power wheels, all in a super powerful V egg engine. Test drive. So this is my giant glitter Easter egg. I got this at Michael's. There are a couple of things that I have to do to prep it. And this will be good because it'll really support the weight of the balloon and anything that I choose to put in it. This is the trim that I will be using to actually suspend the gondola, the passenger compartment, from my balloon. It's a really nice looking pearl type trim. It's like little flowers. So what I've done is taken my gondola and I figured out more or less about how far I wanted to hang from my balloon. So I have cut four pieces of the trim 18 inches long. And I'm going to put these on first because I wanna go ahead and trim and cover all of this and where these actually begin on the balloon. So all of that will be nicely concealed. All right, these are all glued on and ready to go. This is an extraordinary event. My next step is to start gluing on the trim. I'm working with lavender on the gondola. So I found a really pretty satin ribbon that's in the same lavender color. And I'm gonna glue this exactly right on top of the seam. So I got this trim at the hobby store. I think it's really pretty. It, it a nice lace trim and I'm going to lay this right on top of my lavender trim and what that does is it gives my center stripe that lavender color but adds all the texture which I really like we have our trim all the way around my egg so what I decided I wanted to do was make some flower petals that match the gondola to go on the top of my egg. I am taking some of my scraps of fabric. I've made a little pattern of a flower petal and I'm going to pin these layers together. And with my good scissors, I am going to cut these out. So here's the top of my egg. Boy, that's distracting. Hold on. So that we have the point of the petal lined up right in between my two points. And of course, when all of this comes together, we'll have those petals that correspond pointing towards each other at the top and the bottom. bought a little silicone brush to see if that'll help me move things around without burning myself too bad. And this, I'm just gonna follow along the edge of very delicately. Look at that, my little padding tool. Now that helped a lot too, so that I could pat it into place. 
it's sort of crucial using these tools that the glue dries just a little bit, cools down just a little bit. Part of this is moving it around so that it looks like the petals are completely symmetrical. So it's a little bit of fudging things around to make it look right. Now, I do go out and buy specific things for specific projects quite often, but a lot of times I'm working off of things that I already have, a lot that I have left over from other projects. Of course, it always helps save money, so it's good to do that. But sometimes it leaves me at the mercy of how much of a particular thing I have left, which then inevitably ends up influencing your design decisions. Just like whenever you make a big mistake, it becomes a design feature. Anyway, there it is, cute. The top looks pretty good. This, I found at a party store, it was $1.49 for all of this. They're plastic stones, they're sort of a purple color, and they have a neat Aurora Borealis over them. And here was my little test swatch. They have a self-adhesive strip, which may or may not work to my advantage, but I am going to go ahead and use these, nonetheless, layered over my lavender ribbon. So let me find my seam, and I am going to start right there. There we go. Pretty rhinestones, rhinestones, all the way around my eggs. Nice. So the next piece of trim that I'm ready to commit to is this lovely piece of scallop trim that I found at Joanne Fabrics. I think that's gonna go really nicely around the egg right here, draping down just like it would do on a balloon. And I'm not gonna glue it down flat. I'm gonna let it sort of hang down a little bit and out the way it naturally wants to do. It looks more like a scallop banner that has been hung on the balloon. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This little floral trim, again, at a party supply store, very inexpensive, but I like it. It's sort of a satin embossed pattern of flowers. Because it's flat, it won't drape really well. So what I need to do is clip that bottom petal. It's actually two petals holding together that make the trim the way it is. And so I'm just clipping that bottom edge. And what that does is it allows this to really move more. good all the way around and mostly even but you know what you can't see it from all sides at all times anyway so if it's not perfectly even it's gonna be just fine I have this piece of trim left over from another project and it's kind of an expensive trim very nice embroidered I love it, it has a lot of texture and what I've done is I've cut it apart into little appliques and I think what I've decided is I really like the way this looks here draped just like that. So I'm going to commit to that and just go ahead and glue it on. 
So it's sitting just on top of this piece of trim. And I also have these buttons that I got at Hobby Lobby that I'm gonna glue right in the middle on the next step. I love the fact that they drape the way they do. It looks like a big formal medallion of some sort, but still a flower. My big Fabergé looking hot egg balloon. Now I am gonna let these guys dry a little longer. All four of my little pearl flowers are now glued into the center. Oh, I have taken the same trim that runs along here and I've actually cut the scalloped edge off. And I am going to glue this now around my petals, which will extend that a little bit more. All right. Just gives it another little something something. The next piece I'm going to add, because you can never add too much, is actually this little nugget. More gold appliques that actually are a very big piece of trim that I have cut apart. Now, they would probably look better in between these gold flowers, but then they'd be covering up my pretty purple petals. Say that five times fast. Pretty purple petals, pretty purple petals, pretty purple petals, pretty purple petals, pretty purple petals. So instead, I think I will glue them on more or less like that in between. Well, there it is. And the good thing is that the top around my eye hook is now pretty much appropriately decorated side. But I have this trim that I got at Hobby Lobby. It has these little flowers, a little dangle there. And I like that. I think that's a little more subtle because of course, subtlety is what I'm going for in all of this. Last one of those. Yay. Very, very ornate. So my last piece of trim on my balloon is going to be this white trim that I really love. I am going to add it at those center points. I'm going to drape another little swag on the bottom of the egg in my pearl trim that matches my hangers. This is so exciting. So I took that same trim from earlier and I cut off more of these pieces. It's such a pretty applique. And I'm going to glue these right over where the pearl meets my flower, just like that. And I do want it to hang down and hang free. Gives it a little bit of movement, more banners and decoration off the balloon. So very nice all the way around, it's nice and secured. Having whimsical things like these that are a little ornate can add a bit of whimsy and fun to an elegant home. You can put up decorations like this seasonally and it works. It works because it's for a particular season. This is for Easter and not something that you're going to live with every day, all year long. Just like Christmas, it adds a touch of the season, and you don't have to have kids to add a pop of color and a little bit of whimsy to your beautifully decorated, elegant home. I wanna show this, which is the removal of all the hot glue strings. Go ahead and brush off as much 
of the hot glue strands that end up all over the project while I'm working on it. And I love using a foam brush. Sometimes just swirling it on the surface will collect a whole bunch of, of glue strands all at once, which is really pretty great. So you can pull those off. Occasionally, I'll use a regular paintbrush just like this to get into those really hard to reach places. And then the last step, which is the most effective, is the blow dryer. Just going over the whole surface of the entire thing to make sure that there are no little strands of hot glue. This is Rick E. Rapid, coming to you live from the Peter Cottontail Hot Egg Balloon Festival. And things are really starting to take flight. Give us a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber be sure and hit the subscribe button below.